Okay, well, welcome everybody. I'm going to go ahead and share my screen again here. All right. And in honor of bandwidth sharing, I'm going to also turn off my video so that um, we have as much uh, working room as possible. Welcome today, everyone, to my tools, tips, and templates. Um, let's get started here. Ooh, let's come back. Okay, so let me just take a quick second and introduce myself. I am a technology integration specialist for Education to Career Network of North San Diego County. I support six school districts, adult ed education programs, and I'm a wife of an Ironman. A mom of two, I've been an educator for 31 years, but my most proud accomplishment is I am a grandma to Levi Joseph, who was born last year. So um, in the spirit of um, our isolation, I posted a past picture of me and um, <laughs> moving forward. I've got my email up there and I wanna encourage each and every one of you to uh, feel free to email me. Some of this information is gonna be too much for some of you and for some of you it won't be enough. Um, that's my disclaimer. I'm gonna try to talk slow. I tend to get nervous and talk fast. So um, beings I have an hour and um, I always over prep, I'm gonna, uh, try to adhere to that hour, but yet be conscious of not um, overwhelming everybody. So here we go. Today, what I hope you walk away with is um, me being able to share some ideas and examples of how some technology tools and templates can support you as educators to re-engage your students. I'd like to um, explore three of those tools, um, knowing that there are many, many tools out there, but I'm going to focus on just three. And then I'm going to provide some resources and templates, um, not my design necessarily, but more, um, uh, more of uh, resources I've used and um, introduced to teachers and um, seen them repurpose for the re-engagement of their students as they have um, moved into this remote learning environment over the past four and a half weeks. So before we jump in and look at these tools and get all excited about stuff, I, I'm a big, um, as an educator, I'm a big a why person. Why are we doing it? How does it affect my students as, as learners? For me, technology is, uh, is the bread and butter of everything that I do, but the coin of my realm is student learning. So it has to affect students and make their um, learning um, easier or more accessible or different if I'm going to use it. So um, I want to start with the why uh, we use technology and I want to show you four um, elements of the why that I've seen over the last um, five five weeks, four and a half weeks. And then we'll look at the tools of how these were developed. So the first thing is I am seeing a lot of um, online learning agendas. And that, as we move into the, um, into this phase of how do we continue to teach online, um, teachers are posting uh, learning agendas online. And here's an example of a learning agenda. This is um, a image, if you will, giving um, the week. This is a week learning agenda. It's telling the students the three things that they're going to be covering um, and what homework the teacher hopes for them to accomplish. Um, and then this particular teacher is using an LMS system called Canvas, and so she is also incorporating um, discussion conversations with her students in Canvas. So 
this particular learning agenda for this teacher, her name is Jackie Urell from Poway Unified School District, um, adult ed, um, she's an advanced ESL teacher. She posts one of these learning agendas every Monday and then holds Zoom meetings throughout the week to follow up with this. So this is an example of a learning agenda. The second type of re-engagement that I've seen are learning newsletters, um, a little different from an agenda in that the learning newsletter is more of a newsletter. Now this particular newsletter is being presented also inside of a learning management system called Canvas. You don't need Canvas to do it. The teacher's name is Elaine Moore and she comes from Escondido Adult School. She is an advanced ESL teacher um, and also teaches intermediate. And she is using a tool called S'more and she uh, has a, a message she posts for the week and has a message and then she's integrating the tools the websites that she used throughout her um, normal face-to-face -face, um, with her students so here some of you are probably very familiar with word of the day and then she is um, engaging them back with a Google Doc that they would save to their drive and continue working on um, throughout the week. And so she has her instructions on what she wants them to do. She's embedded video to support that and et cetera. So this is more of a newsletter type because it contains um, uh, content as well as resources for student work. Okay. The third thing that I've seen out there is something called choice board. Now, choice boards have been around for an awful long time, but through this through this um, quarantine phase and remote learning, they've re they've really come back around. And a choice board is when we give the opportunity for students to choose what they want to work on. So rather than tell them do this, do this, do this, they get to choose. And as a proud mama of a second grade teacher, I had to demonstrate my daughter's choice board because I showed her how to do one. So she's deploying, deploying this to her second grade students in Mustang, Oklahoma. Her students come to, this is actually on a, um, a Google site. She didn't have an LMS in her district, so she made a Google site and then she um, enrolled her students into this site. So it's a protected site, so only they can see it. And then she created this choice board. And on a choice board, uh, the students get to choose what they want to work on. And she updates it every week by putting in a new surprise. So they get to click on whatever that surprise is of the week. And then on her choice board, there's always a little link that takes them back. So they get to choose what they want to work on for the week. And the final um, element that I am seeing out there is something called a tic-tac-toe. And a tic-tac-toe is more of a format, and hopefully this will come up in our time here. Okay, format is more of a structure. And in this nine block structure, um, the, the, middle the middle square is the square that everybody has to do first. And then they get to choose the other two squares they want to do to make a tic-tac-toe. So they would have to do the middle one and then they could do seven and three or eight and two or nine and one. So as you are creating activities for your students to do, you could have a, a writing and a reading or um, a writing and a vocabulary. So you could pair activities together based on maybe a central reading or chapter or activity that you're having them all do. So this is a structure that could be used as you reach back out to your students and engage them, re-engage them into the learning process. Okay, so we're going to pause here for a second and we're going to ask, how are you feeling? 
Are you excited? Do you need to think about it? Or are you saying, oh my goodness, not sure where to start? Go ahead and, and uh, give me some, give me some uh, feedback here because I can't see your faces. <laughs> I, I'm glad the excited, I, ha, I haven't lost too many people yet. Okay. All right. So Stacey, you also got a chat. These look like great ideas. So I just wanted you not oh, to miss great. that. <laughs> oh, thank you very much. Cause I'm not monitoring that at all. So I appreciate that. Okay. So for those of you that are not sure where to start, um, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna talk about that in my very last slide. So I will I will make sure that I address. Oh my goodness, where do I even begin? Okay, so I'm gonna close the poll, and we'll go to the next slide. All right. So as you reengage your students. The question I would ask is, how have you reached out to them? Have you emailed them? Have you um, used remind.com? Are you using a WhatsApp? Do you have an LMS where you're using an announcement tool? Do you have a Google Classroom? How have you connected with them? That would be the first question. And so, in, in our consortium, we've spent the last couple weeks just checking in with them, just making sure they're still there, just trying to um, make sure we didn't lose them in the rush. And we're slowly re-entering the learning process. And we've now moved into, it's, not, it's now time to continue learning. So um, here are some elements we'd like you to begin to work on. Here's Burlington English. Here is, um, here is work from our textbooks. Not all of our consortium schools have textbooks, uh, have, uh, uh, organized content that they can assign. So it's it's kind of like Elaine Moore. She um, is using outside resources. So uh, the question to you, and you, you don't have to answer this, but the question to you would be, have you reached out to them and, uh, and do you have a connection with them? So the next question would be, now that you have that connection, how do you re-engage them with learning? And that's where these tools can begin to come into play. So I wanna start with Google Slides, and then I'll take you to some more, and then I'll take you to the Google Doc and the Tic-Tac-Toe. I recommend you not try all three with your students. Pick one of them, and then do that for a while. Get used to it, get your students used to it. Don't, don't, jump around because they're, they're as confused as we are. So just pick one method and then stick with it. Um, for those of you who need uh, an article to read because you're paper trained like I am, I'm, I'm in my 50s and I, I like my paper. Um, I found articles out online that I felt were, were really um, helpful to support um, how to do these activities, how to make a choice board, how to make a newsletter, how to make the, the tic-tac-toe using Google Docs, that I won't have time in this particular webinar to talk um, in detail about, okay? So let's get started with um, Google Slides. So what I wanted to do in this presentation is I wanted to show you how to use the tool, um, get you to understand the purpose that the tool could serve, and then give you a template so you weren't starting from scratch. Oops, see a little typo right there. I, I am dyslexic, by the way. And my uh, editor was off doing other OTAN stuff and did not proofread. So if I have any errors, I'm going to just apologize up front. So tips to keep in mind when you're working with Google Slides. If you're going to create a learning agenda or a choice board, 
Is it one slide or are your slides going to be connected? If it's one slide, that's great. If it's going to be connected, you've got to think about how you're going to connect the slides. Think of some kind of little icon. Like on Serena, she had the little puppy dog in the tent. Second thing is, where are you going to post this information? Do you have an LMS that you can present this on? Are you using a Google Classroom? Are you, um, do you have a Remind um, account that you could send this out? How will you send this out to your students? And then the final thing to keep track of is when you're using one of these tools is, is it your intention to collect work back? And, and if it is, how are you going to collect that work back? Um, as we move closer to the end of our school year, are we going to have to, as educators, uh, uh, be accountable that our students not only came online, yes, I had 25 students in my Zoom account, but are we going to be responsible for collecting work that they did um, complete stuff? I don't know. And, that, and that's a question for your district or your administration. Our administration has told each school district specifically what they're responsible for. So I have to help each school district deliver on that. So um, that's kind of how that works. So let's talk about Google Slides. So first of all, this first slide is that learning agenda. And that's a single slide with links on it and I'm going to go show you this template. The second slide over here is a slide deck that when you click on it, it goes to the particular slide that's been linked. And this third one is a tic-tac-toe using a Google slide that I made just for you guys attending this particular webinar. So you could go out and increase your own um, technology toolbox. And I would like for you to submit what you learned on a Padlet wall that I created a link to right here. And so you will get this particular um, slide deck as participate as um, because you participated in this webinar. So you'll get this, this particular um, link. So let's look at the templates. Um, if I click on this link right here to Google Slides, I've created a folder called Remote Learning. And, and you will get access to this folder. In this Remote Learning folder, I have another folder called slide templates and these are the templates that you can use. So let's take a look at one of these templates. Here is the template. This is just a slide, a Google slide, and on each one of these are these text boxes that you have the ability to customize however you want. So today is not Monday and it's the 15th. So you would simply come in and edit the slide however you wanted to based on your content information. And what you could do is you could copy for the entire week. You would right click and say duplicate the slide and then make your week's worth of slides. And then you could display them on either your Google Classroom or your LMS or, or send them out in your Remind. However, your plan is to deploy this information to your student. Um, again, this is a, a slide that someone has built this background, this template, and then I added in the particular um, text boxes and again they're just a text box you may not have extra practice you may want to call it fun links or whatever you have the ability to edit this in any way you deem necessary so um, come back to that um, all of these are just different templates different look and feel and you can make them look or change the colors you can have access to however you want to make them look Okay, so that is a learning agenda. Again, it can be a week or a day, however you choose to do it. This second one that is multiple slides, again, it's in here. 
and um, let's see. Um, so you'll notice here this one, this one's a little bit fancier. I'm going to come to this second slide. And these are, these are ones, these are templates I found out on the internet that were um, designed for teachers to copy. So they, they were free for us to take and copy and repurpose. So again, this is a Google slide deck, but in this case, there are multiple pages to it. So if I wanted to go to Google slides, I'm going to go into present mode so you can see that. And can somebody confirm that you can see that for me? Anthony? Hi, yeah, hi, Stacy. Yes, we can see the okay. um, slide that you just posted. Okay, great. So if I clicked on Google Slides, you will notice down in the bottom right hand corner, it says back to, and that takes me back. So let me get out of that. So that comes in by creating back to menu, what they did was they found an image and when they created the hyperlink, they created a hyperlink back to a, the first slide. That's how they made this. So um, when you're creating your slide deck, you can not only link to outside websites, which in this case, here is one, but you can also link within your own slide deck. So this is what's called a non-linear slide deck. You can link around. You don't have to go from one to the next, to the next, to the next, okay? And then uh, finally, this particular um, tic-tac-toe I made for you. Um, and I just put in tools that I think are um, uh, great little um, engagement tools for your students. and um, I put them under categories. Again, this was a template I found and um, use with our teachers. So Flipgrid can be an assessment tool. It can also be a content creator tool. So if you've not used one of these, go ahead and um, practice. Take a risk. Click on it. Pretend you're a student and just do it. Okay, so I'm going to just pause for a minute. Anthony, any questions regarding Google Slides that I might need to answer? Yes, and it, it basically seems to be the, the same question, and that is you mentioned that you were able to find these templates out on the internet, which is yes. fantastic. However, can you give us some direction as to where you find them, or um, yeah. you know, what do you type in the Google search bar that will get us to um, where some of these are? Yes, I literally typed in uh, choice boards, um, uh, ESL, or just um, uh, choice boards, student learning. Pinterest had so many, I couldn't even begin to go through them. So just, just type in choice boards and you'll be amazed at how many come up. Choice board templates, um, uh, that, that really is all I did. And then I just started tweaking them. Like for example, Serena's here. Um, her, her classroom theme was campers. So this choice board, it had these little yellow sticky pads, but it, but then the rest of the stuff, the little camping theme, she added, I didn't add that. She had some clip art, um, that she had uh, purchased, that she had the rights to, that I didn't, that she customized. So if you just get the basics of the template, then you can customize and make it look how you want to. Okay? Stacy, one more question. Um, I'm not sure if you mentioned it, mentioned it or maybe you want to clarify it. So if I go ahead and find something that I like out on the internet. Yes. How can I get it into my Google Drive, my Google account? Terrific. Okay. So when I found, um, when I Googled choice boards, like, like this, uh, this one here at the bottom, um, the person had a link for me to download the template to my Google Drive. And it, although it didn't have all, 
the same information. Uh, I took um, the concept of it. And so I didn't have to recreate the little boxes or the colors. I did recreate the words because they weren't exactly what I wanted. Um, but um, basically speaking, the template was done for me. And this person gave me a link to download it directly to my, um, my drive. This drive, uh, I'm going to come back to this remote learning drive. You'll notice here it says digital choice boards template. This particular person allowed me to download an entire folder. And so when, you, when you're out looking, um, uh, they, they, will, they will let you download them to your Google Drive. Most of them for teachers, the corporate world doesn't do choice boards, mainly just educators and educators are all into Google. So most everything I found was uh, downloadable to my Google Drive. And if it, if it wasn't, if it was like on Pinterest, or let me show you this one, for example, I found an image of an ESL one. I saw this and although it's not downloadable, I did take the image of it and I'm going to recreate it. So I, it's just a box, it's a table with a three by nine. So I, I have a template that's a, 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 a three by three template and I'll just need to type in these words. So even if I don't find the exact thing, I might find somebody who has the content that I like and I'll go and using a blank template, which I have in the folder, we can go ahead and so in the folder, let's go back to the templates here. I have a blank tic-tac-toe board. You can just add how you want. Does that answer that for folks? Yes, Stacy, I think it does. Okay. All right. So in lieu of time, 1234, I'm going to go ahead and go to our next tool, which is the S'more site. And I wanted to show you something a little outside of the Google family, just, um, just to, just to kind of change it up a little bit. And S'more is a online newsletter tool that is incredibly easy to use. And um, keep in mind, that it does have a free version, but that, whoopsie, come back, that free version only allows you three newsletters. So after your third one, you would have to, you would have to redo your first one. You would have to reset it. The, the element of the s'more that I really liked is it allowed me to call, to do what I call the worth it test. Oftentimes I, make something, I have to ask, was all that work worth it? People use, are they looking at it? Is it helpful? And what I like about Samoa's one, my student can follow me. I can post it on social media sites for them because right now I'm reaching out any way and in every way that I possibly can. My students, by the way, are my teachers. Um, across my consortium, across my six districts. And um, here's Miss Elaine Moore's um, uh, s'more site for, for this week. And she has 66 views. So 66 times somebody has looked at her s'more site. So is this worth the work that she put into it? I would say yes. If she has 66, somebody or some people have looked at it 66 times, and I'll show you some of the statistics on that. The other thing I like about the S'more site is how Elaine has integrated her Google, um, her Google uh, um, work with her students. Now, she was using Google prior to um, our learning uh, mandate, and um, so her students were were okay, I wouldn't say experts, but I would say okay with clicking on a link and saving something to their drive and working on it. 
And so um, the learning was not a super steep curve for them with most of the stuff she is um, posting. So let's go ahead and let's jump into S'more. And this happens to be my S'more account. And um, the thing I love about S'more is it's used a lot by educators and they give you a lot of templates for you to follow. So you don't have to start from scratch. And I would highly recommend you go and look and see what other people are doing. Go, go see what they're doing first. Go investigate. And I'm going to go ahead and just um, show you uh, my newsletter first. So this is my most recent newsletter. And when I come in, 148 people have looked at my newsletter. And I posted this particular newsletter last week, Wednesday. And this newsletter was on how to do a screen capture. So um, I post uh, the tool. In this, in this particular newsletter, I'm teaching them how to use two different tools, Screenomatic and Screencastify. And then I am collecting their work using a Google form because I want to see if they did it or not. And I provide a sample. So um, here's what it is. Here is how to get started. And, uh, and then here's a link to the tools and um, why the difference and it's an easy way for me to lob this out and then allow people to be in charge of their own learning remember blended blended learning is allowing people it's a strategy that allows people to access learning anytime any place and at any pace so for me, I'm using my S'more site to address blended learning and remote learning at the same time. This, um, I can take this particular site and I can get a link and, um, or I can get my embed code and I can embed it on my learning management system or in my um, Google site or whatever I want to do. It also shows me some analytics and this is kind of fun. Uh, I can go and I can see uh, where people are looking at my newsletter from. And I have someone in Ireland, and I don't know who this person is, but every time I lob a newsletter, they are looking at it. <laughs> so I have no idea who they are. And then I have a couple who are from um, the central or from um, East Coast area, and then of course um, our West Coast. So this is kind of fun. So when you're looking at the uh, worth it um, uh, element of, is all this work reaching my students? This kind of data is helpful. Okay. Um, whoops. Uh, to to. Let me come back really quick, like, because what I want to do is uh, just really fast, like, I am going to um, create a, a, a new newsletter. And what I often do with a newsletter is I simply duplicate, so I'm not starting from scratch. And um, what you have is you have these little elements. And when you want to add an element, here are all the things you can add. So you don't have to be a developer by any means. You just need to be able to click on a button. So if I want to add a title, um, there you go. I just added a title. Um, that is how easy this tool is to learn. And you can see why Elaine, and I believe I have Elaine's open. Yes, you can see why Elaine um, is now using S'more because it's super easy for her to get in her pictures, to write her message, to create links to websites, to create links back to Google. Um, this is her, this is her uh, learning agenda, her learning newsletter for this week. And she, she always tries to um, kind of put in personal stuff to keep that um, connection with her students. Okay, so 
S'more is a really fun tool, pretty easy to use. Um, again, can be deployed on a remind.com, a Google Classroom, a learning management system, in an email, etc. So let me pause here and Anthony, questions with this one. Yeah, just a couple quick ones. So one question is about, um, do you happen to know if teachers are able to view um, the s'mores on their cell phones, mobile devices, and how that looks? Yes, this was the, whenever I look at a tool, my very first question is, is it mobile ready? Because as, as adult educators, we know that the primary tool most of our students in adult education have is a cell phone. Um, I am down in Southern California where um, I'm in a unique area because I'm in one school district that's pretty affluent all the way to one that is not very affluent. Um, but what they both, from, from both levels, the common element is the cell phone is what most of them have for access. So even though in Poway Unified, it's a very, very affluent school district, K-12, our adult ed students predominantly have only cell phone access. It's, it's, very, it's very strange. Um, but that's what they're accessing their learning from. And that has become very evident in this uh, remote time. And um, so now, even more so, do I filter everything I do through a mobile device first before I go forward? So S'more, which is why I use it, is mobile ready and looks phenomenal on your, um, you don't need an app. Um, it, looks, it looks wonderful on your um, cell phone. Okay, and then a few teachers, I think, more we're, we're wondering about getting added to the s'more possibly absolutely so uh let's see here um okay i am going to put uh let's see here um the best way to do that is um okay this is the new one i just created uh what i'll do is i um if how can I do that? I can, on my, on this one, wait, where am I? Sorry. So, so Stacy, I would recommend um, you could put it in the chat, although I don't think you can see the chat right now. So can we do it at the very end? Yes, that's what I was going to do. I'm going to copy this right now. Okay. And then at the very end, I'll put it in the chat. And then you guys can just come and follow. And I'll make sure that, um, that everybody, uh, um, you follow it, then you'll get it. Okay. Okay. And Stacy, one more thing, just a reminder, because there were a few questions that um, the uh, the link or embed button that you just showed us. Yes. Again, this is what you're going to click, 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 click on, <laughs> click on to be able, especially if you grab that embed code. That's what you're going to use to be able to embed this either in the LMS or on a website like a Google site. Correct. That is exactly right. If you, if we look back at Elaine's, so you look here, this, see how Elaine's, well, let me see here, see how this is Canvas, see how it's embedded in this particular page. This is a page. And if I um, hit edit, um, this little code, don't be scared, don't be scared. That little code right there, it, we just went HTML editor and pasted that code in, and this is what appeared. We didn't have to do anything, write anything. All we had to do was click the button and paste. And if you're on uh, a Google site, you'll see a, a button for, I don't have a Google site opened, but if you were on a Google site, um, there's an embed code as well you would just do the same thing. You would click on that, paste that code, and poof, that shows up. And if you're not okay. sure how, email me, and we'll play together. We'll, we'll Zoom and play together. Okay? Okay, All Stacey, right. we're, re we're ready to go. Next okay. part. Okay, next part, because we're running out of time. All right, the last thing I want to show you is a Google Doc. And again, 
you know, many, many people use Google Docs for many, many things. Um, the Google Doc, uh, the value of the Google Doc I found was primarily the size of the paper, that um, the size of the page, the eight and a half by 11. I prefer a Google slide because I can embed video and I have a little bit, it's a little bit easier in terms of design. But if you're thinking about printing, the Google Doc is a better tool. Um, and you're probably going to find more templates out there using the Google Doc. So uh, there's not a wrong or right way to, to do it or which one to use. It's just what you want to um, ultimately deploy to your students. So, whoops, come back. Um, keep in mind, again, where are you going to post or share it? Always keep that in mind. I'm going to make this. How do I get it out to them? Um, second, are you going to collect work? If you're collecting work, where? H how are you going to do that? And then um, finally, it's important to recognize that if you're going to be, if you've got something in your tic-tac-toe square that that's an image or a video, it's only going to be a link. Um, one of the number one questions I've had about the tic-tac-toe was people wanted to embed a quick video so the students only had to see a video right here and they would click on it and watch the video and they wanted the video to be displayed right in the cell on a google doc you cannot do that you can create a link to a video but you can't display the video like you can on a google slide so it's just a different tool what I would recommend you do is open up a Google Doc, open up a Google Slide, play a little bit and see which one you like better. That's, there's not a wrong or right, just which one you like better. Um, let's take a look at the template. And again, I put it in this folder. And um, to get to get this, uh, well, I'm logged in as me, but um, you would simply come in and you're not going to have obviously the uh, edit bar. So you would do file, make a copy, make your own copy. Um, I, uh, uh, these little uh, dots, one, two, three, four, five, um, I will, depending on what I'm doing, I might take them off. So if you need to make a, a second copy, um, you know, make a copy, uh, and this would be called uh, Google Tic-Tac-Toe Template, no dots or no numbers, maybe that's better, no numbers, then um, make, make as many as you want. To, don't hesitate to um, duplicate your work and then play because you can't, you can't hurt stuff. Um, and then um, you're simply typing in the box w when you get here. Um, one of the things I did find a little difficult is, um, is again, uh, the layout um, when you're working. Notice how my text is different here. And, and this kind of stuff, bugs me I want them to be equal <laughs> so uh, you you sometimes have to kind of play around a little bit more in a Google Doc but um, it's possible it's it's not anything you can't do you just uh, patience and hmm where's my favorite button undo you know there there just don't hesitate to undo um, Google Docs are are fairly friendly and easy and uh, not much to them. The final thing I put in this folder is this whole big litany of things. Um, uh, again, these are all uh, templates, so copy them and then do with it 
what you want. So you'll notice here, this is the one I used for my daughter. Um, what is not on this? Well, it is, but see how this little button right here is home? That to me was way too small and that's why I changed it and I put the little dog and I put it over here in the corner where it was easy to be seen. So these are just text boxes and you can customize and make them say whatever you will. Um, one thing, um, let's see here. Uh, trying to think if there's anything that would be unique about this that would be um, people might need to know. Are there any questions about um, working on a slide that people might want to know? Do we have any Q&As there? Um, not yet, Stacy. but let's see if something comes in. Okay. So in closing, as you make that next move, you've connected with your students, either again through Remind or WhatsApp or your LMS or your Google Classroom, and you're now ready to start re-engaging them with learning activities. What I wanted to present to you were some fun ways to get the learning back out there so that it wasn't overwhelming or scary for people to do remotely. One of the biggest ahas I've had over this period as I've watched teachers um, move to this next step is they want to pick up teaching where they left off that last day of school. And the students have joined them in Zoom or what, however they connected with them. And the teachers put up all this content for them to do. And then the next time they met, only one or two people showed back up. And the teachers came to me and said, Stacy, I did all this work and then nobody returned. And that I try to caution them against going too fast with a re-entry of that learning process. You cannot pick back up right where you left off with the learning. So figure out how you want to re-engage your students and go slow. Go fun, go slow, and be gentle on yourself as we close out this particular school year and just have some fun with them. So on that note, I'll leave you with my contact information and um, recognize my guest speakers um, who, who weren't really here, but their content was Elaine Moore, Intermediate, Intermediate and Advanced ESL Teacher for Escondido Adult School, Jackie Urell, Advanced ESL Teacher from Poway Adult School, and Fisher, Intermediate ESL School from uh, ESL teacher from Poway Adult School. And then I want to thank my host, Anthony and OTAN, for allowing me the honor to be a guest speaker today. Thank All you, right. Stacey. Thank and, you. Um, just a couple, we have, we've actually had a couple of questions come in. Great. Um, and first of all, just to, for you to note that um, your email address has a slight typo in it. <laughs> thank you. Okay, let's fix that. Oh, you're right, it does. Let's fix yeah. that. Thank yeah. you, Anthony. Yes, actually, um, somebody pointed that out in the chat, so thank that person. Okay. Um, there was a question, the last thing that you showed us about the choice boards. Mm. So when, you're, when you've finished creating the choice board, um, yes. how do you, I mean, you've been talking in your presentation oh. today about how you share the choice board, mm -hmm. but what about, like, are you doing, are you saving it in any other kind of a format that you would share with your class, like as a PDF, for example? So can so, you tell us a little bit more about sure. the saving and sharing part? Sure. Let's look at the choice board I made for you guys. This is a choice board. And it actually, let me hit escape, is um, in this remote drive. And I called it Tic-Tac-Toe Choice Board. So, uh, oh, I'm not sharing. Am I sharing? Yeah, I'm sharing. Do you see that, Anthony? 
Yes. Okay, so let's open that up. So this is a single Google slide. That's all it is. Okay, I'm gonna stop sharing me again. Okay, single Google slide, that's all it is. And it's actually, I made it, it's a table. And then on this table, I just, it, uh, three, um, three cells across, three cells down. And then I put a text box inside of each cell so that I colored each cell and then put the, the text box in each cell. This template was originally a Google Doc and I wanted it to be a slide. So I redid it, I remade it, okay? So now I would share it with my um, teachers because I don't have students, quote unquote. So I would share it with my teachers. How would I share it? So a couple ways, because it is a slide, um, I could go to file, publish it to the web, and then I can, I would, I, I've already done that, so I would click publish, and then I would get the embed code, and this embed code is what I would then paste on my LMS or um, I, I use an LMS um, or on a Google uh, site. I either use my learning, my, um, my Canvas site or I have a, a Google site. I don't use Google Classroom. So I use Google Sites or I use Canvas. So I would paste that HTML code. Um, I, would, I would do that because then when they opened it up, they're gonna open it up and it is going to um, appear full screen. And they don't get any of this uh, slide information. They just get the, the full screen. Now I'm going to show you a little trick. S um, see this big old long hairy URL up here? I I'm going to just copy that and um, open up a, a foreign browser and I'm going to paste it in there. See this word right here? Where is it? Edit, right there. It's, it's um, towards the very end and it says edit. If you remove that word edit and put present, then it will, then I'm gonna copy that, then it will present the, the choice board in a presentation mode. So for some teachers who don't have a learning management system and they just want to email this out to their students or they want to use Remind, um, that's a big long address so that's another conversation we could have. But if they want to use something other than a learning management system or their Google Classroom, um, uh, or if they use their Google Classroom. If you, if you change that edit to present and pasted this address, this is how the students see it. And then anything they click on goes right to what you've chosen. So I could click on any of these and then Submit what you learn. This is the little Padlet wall. So I've asked you to share what you've learned. Uh oh, there is my timer. So does that answer the question about sharing a choice board? Uh, yes, Stacy. I think that was the person's question. Um, so we have just a couple more questions. Um, one is, and I'm not sure you've talked about it, but what about the students 
do they all need to have Google accounts or, or do you recommend that all the students have Google accounts or is it not <sighs> necessary? You know what, that's the million dollar question. Um, um, hmm, that's the million dollar question. If you're doing something, um, if you're doing something like the agenda, the online agenda, the learning agenda, which um, let's just squeak back up there um, and click on it really quick like. Um, if you're just displaying content like this, they don't need a Google account because they're just viewing. But if you're going to collect any of their work, then how are you going to collect that? Are you going to, that, that would be my next question. So I, I'm a big proponent of our adult ed students having an active Google account because down the road, I'm eventually going to want to collect work from them. And I'm going to want them to create accounts. I'm going to want them to, to do things. I'm going to want them to be creators of content, not just consumers. And so in order to be a creator of content, you've got to have an active, healthy email account. So having a Google account is always in their best interest. Hey, very good, Stacy. Thank you so much. So everybody now is super eager to get the link to the um, the choice board. Okay, I have it copied. So where do I paste it? Okay, so why don't you do this, Stacy? So stop sharing your screen so you can see the chat, and then we'll okay. go ahead and have you post that in the chat for folks to copy and paste into their browser. Okay, so let's hope I still have it in my um in my little thingy. And I'm going to just do a control. Oh, no. Oh, no. Hold on. <laughs> okay, that was like the wrong thing. So hold on just a second. Okay. Let me go get it again. And um, because apparently I copied something prior to that. Okay. There you go. And um, also... Let me let me post my choice board. Yeah. So the first one that you did, Stacy, to the s'more is that some people were asking about the newsletter, correct? Yes. And they that was to... that was for the newsletter. So now okay. let me get the um, the uh, the, the other one, the choice board. Okay. Okay, and that is going to be. Second. One second here. I'm so sorry. I hope we don't like turn off. No, I think we'll be okay. Okay, good. Yeah. So okay. again, the s'more.com is for Stacy's newsletter. And then Stacy's going to share with us the letter, uh, the link to her choice board. Yeah. And I'm just going to paste, I'm just going to do the, um, the whole thing so that they could do a, um, I'm not going to put it in any kind of present mode or anything. I'm just going to paste it so that, like that. I know that looks really ugly, but <laughs> it, it, that way, if you want to make a copy of it or do whatever you want, please, um, please feel free. Yeah. So maybe for folks, if we can just hold off on the chat for 30 seconds here, where all of you can make your way over to the chat, you want to copy that entire Google Docs address, so the HTTPS docs.google.com presentation, and then all that stuff. I'll make a bit.ly really quick like and put it on the bottom of this slide because you're going to be sharing this slide, right? Yeah, so we'll, we'll also get the link to your slides today and then we can add it. Uh, people can also access it from there as well. Okay, I'll throw it on the bottom of that slide on my very last slide so that they can get it there too.